We're living in a golden age of astronomy. It is a time unlike any other in human history. For millennia, we have looked up at the night sky with nothing but our own eyes. We saw pinpricks of light against a velvet blackness. We told stories about them, named them, and charted their slow, predictable dance, but we could only ever see the surface of the cosmic ocean. Now something has changed. We have built ourselves a new set of eyes, eyes so powerful, so sensitive, they can look back to the very beginning of time itself. These eyes belong to the James Webb Space Telescope, our magnificent golden sentinel floating silently a million miles from home. The universe is vast and it is old. Its age is almost incomprehensible, stretching back 13.8 billion years. For most of that time it has been evolving in darkness, hidden from our view. The light from the first stars and galaxies has been travelling towards us for all those billions of years. As it travels, the expansion of space itself stretches the light, shifting it into the infrared spectrum. This is light our eyes cannot see. It is a hidden universe of ancient secrets. But the James Webb Space Telescope can see it. It was built for this very purpose, to capture the faint, ghostly light from the dawn of time and reveal the story of our cosmic origins, and what stories it is beginning to tell. We are charting the birth of stars in pillars of gas and dust. We are peering into the atmospheres of distant worlds, searching for the chemical signatures of life. Each image Webb sends back is a masterpiece, a postcard from a time and place we could only ever have imagined. It is a testament to human ingenuity, to our unyielding curiosity, and to our desire to understand where we came from. We are, after all, the universe made aware of itself. And with this new tool, we are finally beginning to read the first pages of our own cosmic biography, a story written in starlight. But with new vision comes the potential for new mysteries. When you peer into the deepest, darkest corners of the cosmos, you should not be surprised to find things that defy our expectations. The universe is not required to make sense to us. It is wilder, stranger, and more magnificent than our limited imaginations can often grasp. Recently, as astronomers sifted through the treasure trove of data from Webb, they found something, something unexpected, something that does not fit our models, something that has sent a ripple of both excitement and profound unease through the scientific community, a new secret revealed. To understand what Webb has found, we must first understand how it sees. Imagine a telescope, but not as you might picture it. It's not a simple tube with a lens. It is a colossal, intricate instrument, a marvel of engineering. Its primary mirror is enormous, over six metres across, composed of 18 hexagonal segments of beryllium, each coated in a whisper-thin layer of pure gold. Why gold? Because gold is exceptionally good at reflecting infrared light, the very light that holds the secrets of the early universe. This giant golden eye is our key to unlocking the past. It collects ancient photons that have journeyed across unimaginable distances. The telescope does not orbit the Earth like Hubble. Instead, it orbits the Sun, far beyond the Moon, at a special point in space called the second Lagrange point, or L2. Here, the gravitational pull of the Sun and Earth balance perfectly, allowing the telescope to remain stable with minimal effort. More importantly, it can use a giant five-layer sunshield, the size of a tennis court, to block out the light and heat from the Sun, Earth and Moon. This is crucial. To detect the faint infrared heat from the most distant galaxies, the telescope itself must be incredibly cold, just a few tens of degrees above absolute zero. It operates in a state of perpetual frigid twilight. This combination of a massive gold-coated mirror and its extreme cold gives Webb unprecedented power. It is 100 times more sensitive than the Hubble Space Telescope. Think about that for a moment. It can see a bumblebee on the surface of the moon not in visible light, but by its faint heat signature. It is this sensitivity that allows it to collect light from objects that formed only a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. We are literally looking back in time, witnessing the universe as it was when it was just a toddler taking its first steps out of the cosmic dark ages. It is in this profound darkness, in a region of space that appeared almost empty to every other telescope we have ever built, that the discovery was made. The telescope was performing a deep-field observation, staring at a tiny patch of sky for hundreds of hours. It was patiently collecting every single photon that fell upon its golden mirror. The goal was to find the faintest, earliest galaxies, and it did, but it also found something else. 
something that shouldn't be there, something that is forcing us to question what we thought we knew about the fundamental nature of the cosmos itself. The object has been given a designation, as all celestial discoveries are. It is called JDIWIST 0723X9. The name is clinical, sterile, and gives no hint of the utter strangeness it represents. It was found in the data from a deep field image, a cosmic tapestry woven from the light of thousands of distant galaxies. Each smudge, each point of light is a galaxy home to billions of stars, perhaps billions of worlds. But amidst this familiar cosmic menagerie, JWS 0723X9 stands out, or rather it fails to stand out in the way it should. It is a void, a patch of perfect, absolute blackness. Its distance is staggering. By measuring the redshift of the galaxies surrounding it, we know we are looking at a region of space over 13.4 billion light years away. This means we are seeing it as it was just 400 million years after the Big Bang. This was the cosmic dawn, a time when the very first stars were igniting and pushing back the primordial darkness. It was a universe of immense energy, of creation, on a scale we can barely comprehend. And yet, in the middle of all this nascent light and fury, there is this absence, this pocket of nothing. What makes it so deeply unsettling is its shape and its scale. It is not a random, amorphous patch of dark. It is almost perfectly circular, and it is colossal. The data suggests this region of emptiness is roughly two million light-years in diameter. To put that into perspective, our own Milky Way galaxy is about 100,000 light-years across. This single patch of blackness could contain 20 Milky Way galaxies placed side by side and still have room to spare. It is a super void, but one that is far larger and far more perfectly formed than any we have ever seen or even predicted could exist so early in the universe. The edges of this void are what truly baffle scientists. They are sharp, unnaturally so. When we look at other cosmic voids, they have fuzzy, ill-defined boundaries with a gradual thinning of galaxies. But JWS 0723X9 is different. The galaxies at its perimeter seem to stop abruptly, as if they have reached the shore of an uncrossable ocean. Just beyond its edge, we see the expected population of primitive young galaxies. But inside the two million light year sphere, there is nothing, no light, no infrared heat, no galaxies, no stars, no gas. Just a profound and chilling emptiness that defies our cosmological models. When astronomers first saw it, they assumed it was an artifact. Problem with the telescope's detectors, a glitch in the data processing, that would be the simplest explanation. But they checked, and they checked again. They pointed Webb at the same patch of sky from a slightly different angle. The void was still there. It was real. It is a genuine feature of the very early universe. So what is it? Our first thought might be a dark nebula, a dense cloud of interstellar dust that blocks the light from stars behind it. We see these all the time within our own galaxy, like the famous Horsehead Nebula. They are beautiful dark silhouettes against a backdrop of starlight, but JWS 0723X9 cannot be a simple dust cloud. For one, a dust cloud of that size, two million light-years across, is simply impossible according to our understanding of physics. There is not enough matter in the early universe, nor a mechanism to gather that much dust into one place. Furthermore, a dust cloud, while opaque to visible light, would not be completely black to Webb's instruments. The dust itself would be worn by any background radiation and would glow faintly in certain infrared wavelengths. But uh, this object does not glow at all. It is colder and darker than the surrounding space, absorbing everything, emitting nothing. So could it be a black hole? This is another tantalizing possibility. We know that supermassive black holes exist at the center of most large galaxies. They are objects of immense gravitational power, where space-time is warped so extremely that nothing, not even light, can escape. 